bit of an outdoor rouse house. Yeah, I'm in the garage. Um, pressing need, really, to sort the garage. A couple of reasons why. Um, well, it's all been sat in here during the winter, and it's just odds and ends that I didn't really know what to do with. And uh, a lot of it now can get tipped, because I've actually got a chance to go through it all and decide what I want. What I want to keep, do you know what I mean? Some of it is stuff that I brought over from my old garage, and uh, quite a lot of it is what my dad left behind. So, main aim anyway is to clear it today. Down the side here, this was something my dad accumulated, is a big stack of 2B3s, treated timber. And they're about, I'm not sure, 8, maybe 10 foot long, I'll have to measure them. But I think they're going to be alright for the roof timbers on my lean-to at the back, or for repairing the shed. In any event, I'm not chucking those. Um, so they're going to have to be moved. We're going to have to find a home for them somehow. <laughs> um, but if you look up in the roof, look, there's all sorts of timber. But like, look at this one. That's hardwood. I don't know what wood that is. My stepfather would know. Uh, but it's a long length. And it's not something you'd throw out, because it's just too good. I think this is why my dad stored them up here. These pine battens, yeah, well, they're kind of useful. I found uses for them around the house. But he kept all kinds of stuff like this. This is hardwood, but it's like thin stuff. I used to strip of that upstairs on the landing um, when I needed to finish something off. And uh, screwed that on and it did the job, then painted it white. Yeah, that was good. Uh, the front drawer are some kind of cupboard. Uh, but again, that's a hardwood. Um, I presume that's why my dad put it up there. Uh, so what else we got? Yeah, more wood. It's fascinating this, isn't it? Looking in somebody else's garage. Uh, load of tins of paint that my dad left behind. I don't think I'm going to need any of that, but it's kind of difficult to get rid of, isn't it? Uh, a part of the camper that I didn't need because I was thinking about going 240, 240 volt, and uh, I think I'll end up chucking that in the end, to be honest. But it actually made a useful template to make me back cupboard, so all is not lost. Um, 12 volt. Um, 12 watt fan. Um, interestingly, when I got my solar panels on my camper in the summer, they run two 12 volt fans, no problem in the heat of the day. So the hotter it gets, the faster the fans go. Really good. Um, a little jack, which I do occasionally use um, when I'm dealing with a gearbox and engine, when you want to kind of support both ends. Um, my camper fridge freezer because it does get down very cold that uh, 240 volt so you can get it all down freezing cold at home or you can run it on 12 volt on the on the move which I have done or you can run it on gas which you're not supposed to do on the move but I've done it countless times and never had a problem with it and uh, even slept in the camper all night didn't set off the CO2 with the um, gas alarm so that was fine um, yeah some kind of bench thing here which needs to go. I'll just keep the timber off the top of it, but the rest of that can get scrapped. I've got a big pile outside for scrap. Let's have a look. What else have we got? Well, I can't really see it in the light, but it's an abacus. <laughs> I don't know, but my dad bought it. Yeah, so really I've got to clear this place of what's left over, or at least get it all into the old conservatory at the back which is uh, in danger of falling apart, but I think it will last another 12 months, uh, enough to shield this stuff. Main thing is, um, I've got height clearance in this garage uh, to get my camper in, no problem. Measured it from here down to the floor. It'll fit uh, with a bit of room to spare, but it won't fit under that concrete lintel. So the reason I'm having to clear the garage is because at some point next week, this garage door is going to have to come off uh, and it be left open because I'm not going to be able to install the door straight away. I may be able to at a later date, it's possible, uh, but at the moment I can't. And I've also got to get rid of that concrete lintel, which pulls the two sides of the garage in um, to get the height clearance. So that and that have both got to come out, and I've ordered two scaffold boards which will fill the gap. That's my plan. Uh, should work all right if I get this get this sorted. Um, and the good thing is then I can unbolt the scaffold board to, uh, you know, 
if I need to get the camper out again, no problem. Rather than have to deal with these big lumps of concrete. It does mean I've got these big lumps of concrete left over, but we'll come to that when we come to it. Hopefully it's not reinforced. It probably is though, no my luck. Um, I'll break it up and somehow get it tipped. Yeah, so that anyway, that's why I'm here in the garage for Ralph's house. And uh, just sorting out all these bit, bits of crap that have been left in the garage over the winter. Get this whole place emptied out. Because obviously if this door's off, uh, anybody can come in and out and help themselves. And people will, you know what I mean? So, main job today is to empty this garage. And uh, I will, I'll be with you later, because I think this is going to take some time. Now the other thing is, during the week, I uh, was looking on Facebook Marketplace, as you do, and uh, came across these. <laughs> They're rather nice, aren't they? Um, anyway, I'm going to be picking those up on Monday. But as far as I know, the history of it, uh, they are genuine, they are Art Deco. And they originally came out of a cinema somewhere near Rill. That's all I know. Uh, but I thought they were absolutely beautiful. I mean, the great thing about Art Deco, or the wonderful thing about it, it was a time in history when art and design and music and fashion, all of these things came together at the same time. And uh, the... the the Art Deco look, they're all very simple geometric shapes, but they have a certain style about them, don't you think? Um, and I've got these shell lights up in the hallway, uh, which look great, but I think I'm going to put these on these two facing edges uh, down the stairs. That's the shell light ones. And the new ones, I'm going to put those in the hallway, because I think it'll just really bring that hallway alive. I'm trying to give it that you know, 30s deco cinema. It needs a bit more gold in it to make it work. But, um, you know, I'm getting close to it. So, yeah, I'll pick those up in the week. 100 quid for two. And uh, not I'm not given to sort of spending that kind of money on really what are frills. Uh, but my chances of seeing another set of lights like that is practically zero. And when you consider that modern lights now, you can easily pay £50 or more just for one. And they're mostly plastic and bits of aluminium, nothing special about them. Uh, but these, of course, were all handmade. Um, albeit in a jig, I would think. Uh, but yeah, they came from a cinema. So they've got a bit of history to them. And will fit rather nicely, I think, in my hallway. A bit windy, but as we've started heading into spring now, the ponds come alive, look at that. And all the fish survived, all of them, which is great. They don't actually eat during the winter. You stop feeding them, I don't know, in about September. As soon as the temperature drops below 50 degrees. Uh, but it's starting to warm up now and they're definitely eating. So uh, I've taken the cover off the pond. And uh, we'll keep an eye on them through the summer. And everything will start to green up soon, which will be nice. I was just making myself a sandwich for lunch. Getting a bit hungry. We're moving all that stuff in the garage. And uh, so I thought I'd make myself a cheese sandwich, but then I thought, I wonder what cheese Ma might like. <laughs> I bet you're thinking, ah! I'll let you know later. Well, actually, I probably won't let you know. Try it yourself. See what you think. Well, if you didn't know, it's my birthday tomorrow. And actually, I don't normally mark it. I think when you get to a certain age, you just don't bother. And uh, <laughs> But I decided actually this year I was going to. And uh, I, when, we, when I went shopping with my son, uh, I said, let's get a bottle of wine. And we'll have a bottle of wine in 20. Well, he's, you know, he's nearly 17. And he said, yeah, why not? I said, well, Shiraz is all right. Because once you've had your first class, um, you think, mm, not sure if I like that. But by the time you've had the first one, you think, oh, give me a second. And that's wine for you, isn't it? But my sister has sent me a lovely card. I won't open it because it will give away too much. But there you are, that's for my lovely sister and uh, brother-in-law, Steve. Uh, but I noticed <laughs> when I opened this parcel... <laughs> holiday camps. <laughs> this is going to be an absolute joy, this book. <laughs> and of course, I worked on one in my youth. Um... For at least a season or two and on Clacton Pier notably 
operate in the Dodgems. I was pretty young, and uh, but I don't know what else have they sent me. What's this? Oh, well, the trouble is you can't tell, can you? Because people send you things that are in different boxes. Is it? Is it a key box? I don't know. Sorry, I know I'm delaying this, but I'm struggling to open it. We'll get there. Yeah, I know, it would have helped if I'd had scissors, wouldn't it? Uh, but I didn't. But that's look, That looks like what it is. It's a box to put... Oh, it's like a wall hanger. That is so in keeping with my house. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Just thought I'd show you that. Isn't that fabulous? We've got to get this open. So we are there, finally. We've got it out of the box. Let's have a look. Are you ready? How cool is that? Hang your keys on the bottom. That is absolutely perfect. My sister's really good at this sort of thing. That is so in keeping with this house. <laughs> Love and hugs to you both. Thank you very much. Flights from Geneva are running late. You know why they're running late? Because it's not a sodding airport. Look, this is Sainsbury's. Look, Sainsbury's Airways. They've got loads of planes, no wings. Engines on order. <laughs> well, this is how Ralph is spending his Saturday morning. And you're looking at these and you think, why have you got computer fans on your desk, Ralph? Uh, well, they are computer fans. They're quite big ones, 120 millimeter. I bought two of them for seven quid, brand new ones. And I also bought Two of these, well, you get two for ten quid, so well, I wasn't going to argue with it. They're cheap enough. Uh, these are our 12 volt thermostats. They do an identical one that's 240 volt. I've also got one of those for another project. Um, but all you need for this is just a 12 volt power adapter, something like that. So what I'm going to do is on the outside of the thermostat, I'm going to, uh, on the outside of the propagator rather, I'm going to mount this socket so I don't have to plug the power supply into it. The wires will loop inside, come out again to this thermostat, which will be on the outside. And if you disconnect the power, it remembers the settings, which is great. The output, and I've just twisted these two wires together, you see, is wired up to these fans. And this would either work in a propagator, or it would work on a computer, if you like. Um, a bit irritating with computers, because often the fans just run all the time, and they don't need to. Um, if you had a proper thermostat on it, they could kick off at the times when the room's cool, and thereby saving you a bit of electric, I guess. Um, so anyway, at the moment, I've set this so that as soon as the temperature hits around 27 degrees, which is optimal for seedlings, once you start getting above 27 degrees, um, they start leaning over and the leaves wilt, and you're in a whole load of trouble. Um, heating the propagator is not a problem. Plenty of propagator heaters. Um, but a, a throughput of air is essential and like I say it helps strengthen the, the, uh, the stems of the seedlings as well so it, there's a probe which will sit inside the propagator and I'm just going to hold it with my hand just to raise the temperature and if you watch as soon as that gets to 27 degrees there we go the fans kick in I've taken my hand off the sensor so the temperature drops it will drop it'll start to drop quite quickly in a second There we go. And as soon as that drops down to about 25 degrees, the fans will kick off. So that should maintain the temperature between that 25 and 27 degrees. Obviously, if you've got a heater, you've got a thermostat on that as well. But this is independent of that and uh, provides the necessary air needed for a propagator. And uh, I should be able to fool this, um, these... Uh, well, I've got peppers at the moment. I've got four or five peppers coming up, and I've got some tomato plants. I've got them in early. Um, but as soon as this drops 25 degrees, there you go. Fans kick off. And again, if the temperature of the propagator rises and goes 27 degrees, the fans will kick in again. So that's my little project. I was just trying to work out a way of doing it um, that works well for the plants. So that's it. If you want to make one of those, as I say, eBay, you can buy two of those for 10 quid. You might get one on its own for perhaps seven. Um, but look for 12 volt thermostat. 
120 millimeter fans you can make yourself a little cardboard template of that as a cutting use a jigsaw and your propagator to cut the hole or um, depends on the, on the kind of plastic obviously if it's brittle plastic you'll have to go steady um, and that's it that's all you need one each end and uh, you'll soon work out which way round to put the fans that's it Ralph project Saturday morning yep it's a pot full of soil a uh, bit of an experiment this afternoon what you're planting Ralph no not that see this there is a hundred seeds in that pack and that is saffron the most expensive spice I think it is well, there may be others but it's a very expensive spice even by the gram I forget how much it is uh, but it's a a form of crocus crocus sativa and uh, i'm going to see if i can grow it so i've sprinkled some seeds in the top of this compost put a light covering over the top and we'll put that in the propagator and we'll see what happens uh, but if it grows it should look a bit like this yeah you see it's a crocus and uh, each one i think throws out three stamens in the middle of the flower the flower in the autumn and that's what you harvest. Uh, well, I'm not planning on doing that. I just think they look rather nice, don't you? Yeah. So I shall keep you posted later in the year. And uh, I shall certainly put up a video if uh, you start to sprout. It'd be interesting, won't it? Wednesday morning. Bottom of an old dandelion and burdock bottle. Good to recycle these things. I put by in plant pots when you don't need to, is there? Think about it. Anyway, it's got some compost in it. And uh, I've planted something. And you're thinking, what is it, Ralph? What have you planted? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a peach stone. And we've all done it as kids. We've shoved in a peach stone in the earth, in the garden, and thought, ah, oh, next year there'll be a peach tree come up. And, of course, there isn't. And uh, they have to be, and my sister gave me the technical term for this, stratified, which to you and me means shove it in the fridge for a while so it thinks it's winter. And then when it's been in there, I don't know, a month or so, bring it out, put it in warm soil, water it, and you should get a peach tree. There you go. We'll just finish this week's Ralph's house with the key box, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. And yeah, I know I haven't papered and painted this wall yet. Uh, my lad asked me that question and I said, oh, that's because I can ascertain where the raw plugs are. And even when I paper over it, I can feel for them, know exactly where to put the screws. Simple, isn't it? Right, so um, anybody who knows me knows that historically I've always carried a huge bunch of keys and that was partly because I worked for Citizens Advice so I had keys for various different offices and um, IT cabinets, that sort of stuff. Uh, plus I was in rented as well and when you're in rented you have lots of keys. Um, but now, now I've got a Ralph's house, I only need two keys. I just need my front door key and uh, my car key, that's it. Uh, so now I've got a box I can keep all these keys in. Like, I've, I mean, this thing is full of keys. That's for various vehicles that I'm not driving at the moment. Uh, that one's for my back security gate. Uh, that one's for my freezer, in case I ever need to lock my lad away from the ice creams. Uh, that one's for the stair lift, yeah, even that's got a key. And uh, I've got a couple of other bunches to go on, one being the main house keys, back door key, that kind of thing, alarm key, and uh, some other keys. I forget what they're for. But anyway, this is perfect for that. House is all my keys. So that's it from Ralph's house for this week. Thanks for watching. As usual, please give me a thumbs up. It does help. Uh, more importantly, subscribe, uh, because you never quite know what's going to be in a Ralph's house video. Uh, would you not agree? Yeah, that's the other thing. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever device you're watching this on. And uh, thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.